Okay, welcome back to this clip in which we will talk about how to deal with data that you don't want to analyze or what you could do with it. Now, if you were only interested in the verb uses, of course, and your concordance or your corpus wasn't tagged and you got many false hits, then you would want to take that data out of your data set for further analysis. Now you could remove or delete the rows that you don't want, but I'm always a bit hesitant of removing or deleting data per se. I'd like to keep a copy or a record of what I deleted. So for this um, clip, we have two data sets that we've already looked at to illustrate what you can do. So in this case, uh, say if, if I was only interested in uh, the verb uses, then I could remove the noun uses to a separate sheet. And the easiest way to do that would be to sort by some uh, variable that is uh, relevant here, right? So I'm only interested in the uh, verb uses and then I go down to where the noun uses uh, start. I can highlight that row and then with shift command or control uh, to the end of the table, uh, right? That highlights all the data I do not want. I could then say control or command uh, copy and move it to a separate sheet. Right, so that only copied now the noun users that I don't want. And I can go back to my um, data sheet and then say these rows, I copied them, I saved them, secured them somewhere, and I could now delete them. When you delete rows, always make sure that your table sort of is updated, and in this case it did, so you know that the table um, the data table now ends with the last verb use. So I can go back uh, to the top and it's still sorted in my file order. Uh, pay attention if you have data set um, or subsets or randomized subsets. Um, so you have to be a bit um, attentive there. So that's one use case of where you uh, want to do that. And the other use case that we briefly look at is the um, intercausative. Um, that we had from a few um, clips back. That's a construction that when you query it, so if I go back to my query documentation, where I looked for a verb followed by any number of uh, tokens, then an into, and then a verb in ing. So to find hits like um, I was talked into uh, giving sentence about this issue, or I was forced into signing the contract. But that pattern is very ambiguous. So we'll find lots of false positives, which is why I always start in such cases with a column um, that says example, where I indicate of whether the token I did find is um, an instance of the construction I'm looking at. And for this search pattern for the intercausative, the ratio is usually one in four of the found hits um, would actually be an instance. So I would wanna remove them. So in this case, I found 160 odd uh, tokens and I coded them for whether they are examples or not. And now I can do pretty much the same thing. I ought order here or sort in descending order. And then I always have the um, yeses, right? I've tried to talk him into having a beer. I was getting pressured into cooling the relationship and so on and so forth. And if I go down, right, there we are. Um, then I start getting the hits that are not intercausatives. Recognize recruitment into school teaching or brought something into being. These are not cases of the intercausative as I have to find them. So same thing, select the row, command, control or copy, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, shift, command or control, hold, um, arrow down and that selected all of these. And then I say command or control C for copy and then I have a new sheet down here uh, where I enter the data that I removed and I rename this usually something like discarded, right? So I can always go back to see um, what are the examples that I discarded. And technically speaking, I would also use in a separate sheet um, of documentation, make a bit of a, a record of why I was deleting them and which one so that I know years later or even days later. All right, so I've now secured the discarded ones and I can delete the rows, checking that, yeah, my table indeed ends here. So now I have um, 71 um, instances of the intercausative. Okay, um, good practice perhaps is to keep the discarded data for documentation purposes. So deleting data is always 
a bit trickier to uh, try and um, have a transparent later on of why you discarded um, the data. Or maybe you realize that, hey, I discarded them wrongly and then you could potentially add them back, although that's a bit tricky, but that's a story for another clip. Okay, so once I have removed most or all of the hits that I don't want, I usually start coding in earnest for variables that interest me. And one of the interesting aspects of the intercausative is the verb that occurs in the first position. And then I can just happily code away. And if I then find an instance that, hey, that's actually not an instance either, I can update the I column or the example column, and then later on uh, remove that line to the discarded sheet. So cleaning a data set can be um, a continuous process. And so we go about coding for variables or a variable of interest.